Hello. Hello. Oh, guys, we are back. It is Friday, August 26th, 2022. Nice. How about that? You Eight nailed 26, it. 22, a lot of 20s up in that one. No, it's true. It's true. But, Navi's here. Navi's here. We're, it's early in the day. Mitch isn't here. Uh, and, and you know what? There's a Patreon coming today because yesterday Grant only wanted to talk about what he's going to talk about today, and it's a secret to me. Yeah, so... Last week, Jake did, um, we did something different. He wrote up a script for himself, and I was the observer, slash, I played the role of the audience on that one, you know? Yeah, told you about a big old uh, exploded boat. So I feel as if it was only fair if it plays in reverse, and I do that, right? I want to be yes. unfair. Yes. I want to pull my weight, too, you know, so we're going to do that. You need today. to razz me with a with some sort of tail. So today, I do want to say this up front, and I'm, I'm only going to say this because I think it's worth it for this, this episode. This will be a little bit of a shorter episode. I'm thinking I plotted it at around 40 to 45. Who knows? Who um, knows? But with you never know. Fodder. Think, things can very easily happen. You never know. Life changes. But... I do think the quality of this tale um, is really going to sell it for you guys, and you will not be upset, okay? Yeah, this has to be some supreme top-shelf shit. It is, it's something that I was unaware of. Um, it's something that extremely fits our narrative of what we do here on the show, and I I have a feeling this is going to be the, a first for all of you, if not most of you. All right, I'm stuck. What is it? Okay. You got you to gotta tell me. No, no, no. So it's been gonna, a secret. We're going to start... With a little bit of background information, okay? So John Lear is a gentleman by the name of John Lear. That's the story. No, so okay. close to the guy who makes tracks. So, John Lear is a retired airline captain and former CIA pilot, as well as the son of the famous inventor of the Lear jet. He is the former Lockheed L-1011 captain and is highly regarded in aviation circles. He has flown over 150 aircraft and has earned every certificate granted by the Federal Aviation Administry. All right? Okay. He also hold, held 18 world speed records and has worked for 28 different companies. All right? All right. So this guy gets around rather um, quickly. So in the 80s and the 90s, he started coming forward with very startling revelations dealing with UFOs. All right? Okay, I'm liking this. this I'm liking very, it so far. This is a very interconnected. John Lear really doesn't have anything to do with the topic, but he is the birth of the idea that I had. So I'm starting with that. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of rundown of some of the crazier claims that have been made by John Lear. And this was all given to Art Bell on Coast to Coast, okay? Okay. So... He, John Lear says that the first UFO was recovered in the United States in the late 1930s, and Roswell was the first contact that we had with them, okay? Like actual aliens, you know? Yeah, the, the beings. So according to him, 18 different species of alien exist and are known to us on this planet. See, there's 18 now? Yeah. We need to get some more tears on the fucking Patreon then. So, greys are cybernetic creatures... And they are made to run experiments at the behest of the more powerful species. And they test us, the humans, okay? Okay, all right. We have been genetically modified by the greys at least 65 times. <laughs> and, and like, you know, Holy genetic shit. manipulation. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Modified, but I mean manipulation. So like, probably like with evolutionarily. And you know? among the inner circles of the greys and the higher beings, we are known to as containers. And in his mind, <laughs> it's possibly a reference to the soul, like we're a container for energy. Yeah, you know? we're fucking alien Tupperware. Um, so over this time, and this this interview was in the late nineties. Um, two hundred aircraft, uh, American aircraft, have been lost because of fights with UFOs. Okay. And thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of innocent people were killed at the hands of aliens. What the fuck? Now, <laughs> okay. All according right. to him. Human mutilations are not as uncommon as one might think. So the idea of, you know, what they do with cattle, cattle mutilations. Yeah, they corn out their asshole, no blood, they're all just, they're just dry. But that, on humans, is something that he says is extremely common. And at least what they've been able to observe is that in these instances, they're typically gone from the planet for about one hour, 45 minutes to an hour of our time. Okay. And in that time, 
they have to be left alive during the mutilation because the sample is best when they are alive. Oh, it's kind of like an adrenochrome sort of thing? Sort of. Nobody um, doesn't like that. So, back in the Eisenhower, this goes back to a lot more of the um, Phil Schneider stuff. Yeah. He says that, you know, we met with the greys and some other species and we did we came to an agreement that they would essentially plot out who they were going to take and it would be approved by both factions of human and extraterrestrial and it would be done under specific guidelines so that it wasn't just willy nilly people are going away. Yeah. Shit, dude. I didn't know about like the like so they basically run background checks on people before they're abducted. Not for really. the sake of the aliens? At least on our end, we don't, as far as he says. But um, it's more so just an approval list, so we're aware. You know, we know what's happening. Yeah, it's like Cindy in New Mexico, sure. Now, around this time of the Eisenhower Agreement, this is when he's still in power. Apparently, another species of alien came in and warned us about working with the Greys. Because the Greys are, you know, not to be trusted, supposedly. We got some alien beef. But... This other species, I say species, it's species. Species. This other species of alien was not offering any technology for us, so we immediately turned them down and we continued working with the greys. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, it's like we're already, we're contractually obligated to these little guys. Yes, so now through this, it was realized, not discovered, but at least understood that the conventional idea of God does not exist. The <laughs> so just immediately like the biggest philosophical question yeah, is it, answered. It's like, yeah, we signed a contract with these greys, and uh, I think Nietzsche was right. But this coincides because then the government decided to make a move to ca- make sure that the people were pacified. And this is when In God We Trust was added to our money, and this is when... God was added to the Pledge of Allegiance. Ah, keeping the illusion going. And then he also makes a claim that the Cold War was intentionally a ruse between Russian forces and American forces to kind of keep all of this under wraps. You know, to Well, yeah, I mean, all at the same time, they were fucking sending rockets up there and shit. To play a distraction. Now, yeah. you might be wondering, this shit's all over the map. What kind of story am I going to tell you? Something he said to me really fucking stuck out. Wait, who said what to you? John Lear. John Not is, to me personally. I was gonna, he's talking to you? He was here? But what something he said really, really, really stuck out to me as something that needs to be discussed, okay? Um, I'm going to give you one option, Jake. What do you think it is that I'm going to talk about today? One option. What? I mentioned it in there. It's one of the, the bullet uh... points that I have about John Lear's conversation. And I'm going to do an extreme deep dive on one of them. Uh, uh, are we getting into the, the human mutilation? Good choice. That's exactly what really? we're getting into. Sweet. That's that's just what I need on we this, are getting into this beautiful Friday. The most extreme and documented case of human mutilation that we've ever encountered that can most likely be attributed to possible extraterrestrial activity. Are they just the people on Pornhub with uh, with prolapsed assholes? Oh, this one is worse. I got pictures. I got oh, pictures. Wait, of really? Yeah. Oh, no. I have real live pictures of this shit. Are they things that will be flagged on Instagram for? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Cool. I'll just put a warning before it. Absolutely. So, we're going to travel back in time to 1988. All right. All right. The most lukewarm year I can think of. September 29th of 1988 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Okay. Along the banks of the Billing Reservoir. All right? Uh, yes, the tax, the taxing river. So, a little bit of background on the Billings uh, Reservoir. The waters around, as far as the locals go, have always been seen as sort of dangerous. Um because a lot of gangland bodies are dumped along the shore or in the water. Okay, yeah, you don't want to be swimming with corpses. And every year, at least in 1988, leading up to that for about two decades, I don't have information after this, but for about two decades, so from 1968 to 1988, there was at least one case of somebody drowning in the Billings Reservoir. Every year? Every single year. Mm -hmm. Um, The drowning, you said. So... A young kid, uh, school age, you know, he got out of school. He was walking along the banks of the river, and he had a slingshot with him because he was going to go out. Nice. And he was going to hunt some birds and possibly some insects. He was going to see what he could get. He's the Brazilian Dennis the Menace. Yeah. 
So this guy, he's walking along the Billings Reservoir, having a you know having a, a, a romp, if you will, shooting marbles, shooting stones, and he saw a pack of vultures all in a huddle. Okay. Yeah. So he thinks, you know, I hit the fucking jackpot. So he shoots one of his slings at him, and they move because, you know, they're afraid. And he discovers that they were picking at a human corpse. All right? Cool. So the kid instinctually runs back to the village, and he lets people know, hey, there's a fucking dead body over there. We some, This fucked up. Okay, right? Yeah. No, yeah, you never want to see that. But the vultures were scared of him? Mm-hmm. Have you seen a vulture? It's like the size of you. Well, he was also shooting shit at him, you know. So like, I don't think they were afraid; they just scattered. It's just like the idea of a projectile to a to a bird. Yeah, I it wasn't. Like it yeah, that. it wasn't something they wanted to deal with. I understand now. Um, but anyway, so the the local police do come down, and they inspect the body. They tape it off. Right, they're looking at it, and before any of the locals knew the situation. The cops had decided that they had no way of answering what this problem was, and they were done with it. They were done with it. They couldn't do it. It's like, oh, dead body. Forget about it. And because of this, it never made it to the local news. So nobody really knew about it except people in the village and, you know, the rumor mill would start, things like that. Yeah. Um, so overnight, the, I just farted. God, overnight, fuck, that was a fart? Yeah. Overnight, it sounded like a cap gun. Are you all right, dude? <laughs> Overnight, the body was... just going to blow past that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. It's medically concerning, dude. It was just gas, all right? Just gas. Good Lord. Overnight, the body was taken, right? It was moved. It was gone. All right, the body's gone. The only thing left that next morning was some police tape. That was it. That was it. Okay, they didn't even clean up. Literally, nobody had mentioned this ever again, except people in the village surrounding the Billings Reservoir, Okay. Okay. Now, in 1994, the coroner's report was leaked to the press, all right? Six years later, it was leaked to the press. Okay. Somebody that was working in the local government had found this story, read the report, and saw that it was so fucking insane that it had to be out there, that people had to know what was going on. Okay. So he intentionally leaked it to the press because he was like, it, it, someone needs to know this besides me. Um, so dental records were used, um, this is from the coroner report. Yeah. Dental records were used and they confirmed who the victim was, but the only people that actually know who it was are people in that village, um, because they, you know, talk about it and stuff. Um, yeah. but it was intentionally kept just because it was such a weird scenario that the fam- they didn't want the family to have to deal with this. Okay. Well, I mean, you can kind of put one and one together. It's like, oh, fucking Sheila's gone. Yeah. And they just covered up a dead body and everyone here knows about it. It's not in the papers. I can only assume yeah, so that it was Sheila. A little bit later, I'll get into some of the history of the person involved. Um, what well, Was their name Sheila? There was no name. I don't have any Fuck. names. I, I didn't even bother to look because it's right. very hidden. So that's a fact in my mind that it's Sheila. It's a man. Sheila, Sheila the man. So... This is where shit starts to get fucking weird. The official autopsy report stated that the eyeballs had been removed as well as the eyelids. The tongue had been completely severed and removed. The left ear was cut off as well as the lips and the gums surrounding the teeth. Oh my and God. a significant chunk of the jawbone was missing as well. Now... Under both of the armpits, so left and right, an exactly 1.5 inch diameter hole was left under the right and the left side. Oh my god. They found more holes, same exact size, on both legs and both arms, on the forearms. You have pictures of this? Yeah. That's terrifying. You better hope no one goes on your phone. Skin and the entire muscles inside of the arms were gone. The biceps and the triceps were completely removed. Um, so, like, it looks like the, the forearms and hands are just like a pair of gloves on a skeleton? Essentially, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, every single hole that was found on the body was exactly the same size with absolutely no variation. And the ones that were under the armpit, if you moved the body at the right angle, it led a perfectly straight line and you could see hole to hole. So it just went straight through this person's ribcage and heart. Yeah. 
Well, we'll get to there because there were no internal organs. Oh, well. Every single internal (laughs) organ was removed except one. Um, The only thing that was left in the body was the stomach and the chest cavity. Both of them were shrunk to immediately smaller sizes. What? And there was another hole in the navel, so the belly button was cut out and removed. Um, The coroner said that the only way... That the muscle and the you know the intestines, all this shit, the gallbladder, the liver, the only way it could be removed was through these holes because there were no other incisions. Oh my god! So the only way that they could come out were if they were somehow sucked out through these fucking holes. So aliens got a fucking vacuum. Yeah, his anus had also been cut off. I knew it. And wait. he was castrated. <laughs> wait a minute, cut off? Yeah, the the it anus was, was removed. Okay. The anus was removed as his, well his as penis. He was completely castrated. Testicles and penis. And just as another one, there was not a single drop of blood in the area or in the body. Just like the cows. Every single part of blood was gone. Damn what an interesting meal for those vultures, you know? Yeah. It's like oh, am we'll I get even getting that. any like uh like, nutritional value from this? Like, well, come on. We're going to get to that in a minute. So, as well, the coroner report states almost everything that we're going to be talking about, you know, in this episode. Yeah. Um, every single hole, as it was documented by the coroner, was made with surgical precision. And, oddly enough, rigor mortis had never set into the body. That's terrifying. Now, this is where the vultures come in, right? We know how they were okay. surrounding the body. <gasps> were they alien vultures? No, the vultures had never eaten anything from the body. Oh, they were just, like, scoping it out. There was not a single bite mark. There was not a single peck. There was nothing. Now, what you might be wondering is, you know, what's what's so different here? Well, I like, can think of a couple things. <laughs> in the coroner report, they documented this three separate times. That there was absolutely no smell of decay and the flesh was in perfect condition. Oh, that's kind of nice. So there was no no decomposition of the body. Yeah, okay? I mean, as, as unpleasant as it is to see, you know, you close your eyes and it's it's just a normal smell, just an outdoor smell. Yeah, um, so now we get into the sadness, all right, the really sad part. All right. Upon inspection of the corpse... There was absolutely no signs of anesthesia or any pain meds administered, as well as there was no sign of the victim being restrained. It was determined that he was completely conscious while all of this happened. Well, how would they... Because there's no blood, there's no internal organs. How did they like do a toxicology sort of You're gonna thing? You're going to get here because the brain is still in there. Oh, good The brain is in Lord, there. Lord, all right. There was a presence of a cerebral hemor- hemorrhage leading the coroner to believe that it was an additionally agonizing experience, also concluding that the victim was conscious. So what I was able to find was that the cerebral hemorrhage, it can happen for different reasons, but a big one is under extreme stress, pain, and trauma. And there were no signs of this person having this before, and it was rather fresh as far as they could see. Good Lord. So it they used this as a way to prove that he was awake, conscious, and felt every single inch of what had happened. You know, I could see why the police didn't want to uh, deal with this. This seems like a lot of paperwork. Yeah. And a lot of, uh, a lot of just late nights not knowing. Uh-huh. So the official death report states as such, quote, Acute hemorrhage and multiple traumatisms. There is a component of causa mortis by vagus stimulation, end quote. I know what all those words mean. So what I was able to find is that vagus stimulation is when they, it's sort of like a pacemaker for the nervous system. Um, It's something that we use, and what it does is it can help minimize cardiac problems sometimes. Yeah, that's useful. So essentially what they were able to figure out based on this was that the victim died of a heart attack that was caused by extreme pain. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm in so much pain, I'm going to have a heart attack right yeah. now. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. So Good this Lord. is what we're dealing with. now. That's crazy. They can tell like that an organ that is no longer present was the cause due to like what they found in the brain. Yeah, and I mean... Keep in mind, you know, you got to reach a little bit because, yeah, they're working with what they have. You know, it's not... No, yeah, I'm not, like, doubting it all. I'm just like, wow, the human body's so fucked. Yeah, no, it is. (laughs) It's so crazy that they could just do that. Yeah, they just did that. Um, 
So we'll get into the individual a little bit more. Um, so what they were able to release as far as, you know, keeping everything private, um, the individual was a male of 53 years old, okay? Okay. Um, now, he was an alcoholic, and he suffered from extreme epilepsy, okay? That sounds awful. So obviously we don't have a name. The name doesn't exist. It's, it's irrelevant. The initial thought was this. They thought that he was on a prescription medication for his epilepsy. So they thought that possibly he mixed alcohol with his medication. Probably being an alcoholic. Now, it is important to know that his family admitted that what he would typically do is he would go out on the Billings Reservoir and fish. Okay? That sounds kind of nice. He would go out and fish. And if he couldn't get lucky in one spot, it wasn't a very wide channel, but it was wide enough to where it's a significant distance. Yeah. Yeah. He would swim, you know, he would leave his clothes, and he would swim across to the other side of the reservoir and go fish on that end, okay? It's kind of a free-spirited, kind of nice sort of thing. Yeah. Like a Wes Anderson-esque, you know, just like, let's go over there. Now, this led people to believe that possibly he mixed his medication with alcohol, got into one of his fishing dry spells, and swam across the water. Now... Interestingly enough, this can possibly cause some of the issues he's having. Mm, okay? okay? Some of them, not all of them. Yeah, I mean, the missing organs and, like, the, the weird uh, flesh gloves he's wearing, that's, you know... Yeah. I yeah. don't know about that, but... We'll be back in one second. We're going to pause this for a moment. All right. You'll, you won't even know it. Oh, hello, we're back. Oh, okay, all right. Sorry, okay. we're having some technical difficulties. Don't um, even worry. The system we record on was being a little funky. We're back, though. Um, so as I was saying, they thought that possibly, you know, this is what happened. He went across while he was, you know, mixing pills and liquor. Yeah, you, you, the best thing to do. And that this actually could have been from what would be natural causes, okay? Yeah. That was the initial intent. Grant's being attacked by Navi right now. Yeah, he's I've, in my uh, ear. It's I've okay. pushed him off multiple times, and he learned to go on the other side where I cannot reach it's him. It's okay. He just wants to be by me. You want me to spray okay. him with water, dude? Yeah, you could give him a good spray. A little so. spritz? Oh, he doesn't like oh, it. Oh, he doesn't even <laughs> like it. Oh, he hates it. But, so, Gosh. this is where they say what could have happened after this is he died of natural causes. And then this is where, you know, the vultures and the rats and whatever fucking animal you can think of got their hands on him. And did what they did. And they surgically removed everything. Again, as is unlikely. Surgical precision of these rats. Very unlikely, but not impossible. Now, this is where that theory gets tested. The victim had not been dead long enough for decomposition to take place, as we stated earlier. Yeah, he smells good. And knowing what we know about wildlife and nature, there simply was not enough time for scavengers and animals to eat everything that was missing. Because the body had only been missing for less than 72 hours. Yeah, and the vultures that were there, they just they, they were just looking. Yeah. So by the time that the report was made, they found him within three days. Less than three days. There's nowhere near enough time to get all of that shit out because of animals. Okay, okay. all right. Um, and again, like I said, there were no bite marks on the body. Just the cuts that were made, you know, to the skin. Yeah. Um... So this is when the case was closed, and it it was said that he died of natural causes. (laughs) Another good job. Another another day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Good job, officer. So. Uh, uh, Johnson. A cover-up has been suggested, okay? How about that? Oh, wow. You you didn't think of that one, I had no idea that was coming. But it's interesting because... When this story finally hit the news, years, years, years later, right? Yeah. Sorry, I was drinking coffee. No, no, yeah. no you're good. Um, the news, they all reported that it was at the wrong reservoir. Meet me at the reservoir. Little pup. Little, Their little official, pup reference. The, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Their official report for the news outlets was that the body was found at the Guarapuranga Reservoir. The, okay. the, wait, the what? The Raga? You have a re- Guarapuranga. Guarapuranga. The Guarapuranga Reservoir. And if you is... look that up, that's where you'll find all the pictures that I'm talking about. Guarapuranga. The Guarapuranga Reservoir. Now. It sounds like a pogo stick. The Guara, the Guara, Guara, the Guarapuranga Reservoir is a real reservoir, not very far from where we're at at the Billings Reservoir. All right. But, but that's a detail enough to cast doubt on everything. It's intentionally wrong for some reason, okay? 
And this it's believed by people that are close on this case and feel differently that this was done intentionally as a way to kind of throw everybody off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna I'm gonna go through the four possible explanations as to what happened to this man. Okay. And they all get a little bit crazier than the next. Okay. I'm excited. So we do know. Like let's let's talk about what we do know. We do know that he died and he suffered lots of pain, okay? Yeah, that much is clear. Now, if we're just believe that it was of natural causes caused by a seizure, we understand that most of the time when people have seizures, they don't typically feel the pain that would be caused by that seizure. Now, they will after, but while they're in their seizure, they're not going to necessarily feel the same level of pain, okay? Sort of a nice little mid-moment of existence. Right. So it that you know it could possibly be part of that, but we do know that he died of cardiac arrest, which is possible. But it doesn't explain the results that we have of the actual body. Okay. Yeah, the um, body's fucked up. So to add on to this one, they think with natural causes, potentially a burrowing animal made its way inside of the body. Uh, some sort of beetle. I don't know. I really don't know. A uh, beetle of some sort. But. What they don't mention, and why this is thrown off, this isn't in the official report, but this is something that the coroner would state later in his private notes, that not all, but some of the wounds were actually cauterized and burned. Ah, just like the cow's anus. Some of them. Says. Yeah. yeah. So, could it be number one, that it was natural causes and a bunch of mixed match shit that all played out at the same time and caused this guy horrific problems? Just the worst luck for this dude. Maybe. Sheila, the dude. Number two. Could it have been murder? We do know, at the top of this episode, we do know that the Billings Reservoir does have its fair share of gangland-style bodies that pile up out there. Dude, if this is a murder, that is some brutal shit. Right. That is insane. (laughs) It's like Jack the Ripper if he was a fucking cyborg. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's a good point. (laughs) There are two things... That lead us to believe that murder is not involved, okay? Well, I say too, there's actually a lot more. First off, there was no signs of a struggle. And as we know from previous, there was no signs of any physical restraint, okay? So I would imagine if somebody was getting murdered, there would be at least some fight back marks, you know? Yeah, just like swinging. I would imagine. You know? Maybe. You know? I don't know. I'd try to live. Um, But there's no signs of a struggle, as well as we, as far as we know, and the family has corroborated this, there was no real reason for him to be murdered. It wasn't like he was doing shady shit or would disappear. He was just an old man that liked to be drunk and he liked to fish. So this level of brutality would be unheard of, essentially. Okay? Yeah, I mean, I feel like no one really deserves what happened to this guy. No. No, they do not. Yeah. So murder... uh, uh, kindly enough from all actual police reports and documents murder was pretty much ruled out immediately it yeah. wasn't a murder again another reason why it's like well let's just forget about it yeah it's like well anyways let's just move on from here now this is where i'm gonna need you guys to really open up your minds if you're not into this sort of thing you know me i'm a fucking chasm dude that's true the next two options are a little bit more likely, um, honestly, just because of how fucking weird this is. Yeah. But just keep an open mind, and we'll discuss all these possibilities at the end, okay? Number three. This has been suggested by locals that it could be an unknown cryptid attack, okay? Oh, my God, we're doing a crossover. Now. Of topics. That's awesome. In and around San Pio, Brazil. Or did I say that correctly? I don't want to fuck that up. San Paulo. San Paulo. San Paulo. Sorry. Paulo or Paulo? Paulo. Probably. I don't know. I don't know. In and around the area, and specifically around the Guaraparinga and the Billings Reservoir, there are a lot of different reports of strange animals that don't seem to fit into what we know of nature. Okay. okay? All right. Now, as well following these weird strange reports of cryptids we get into the idea of mutilation and this is not the only mutilation that happened in this area 
but it is by far, in a way, the most intense and extreme one ever. Yeah, I was going to say, if this is just happening regularly in 88 Brazil, that's yeah. it's not as lukewarm as I once thought. Yeah, no. Number four, the one that we've all been thinking this whole time that we're leading up to this, it's fucking aliens. Yeah, we kind of primed you for that. It is fucking aliens. And the reason it could be is because we've talked about this before. We've talked about Skinwalker Ranch. We've talked just about generic cattle mutilations, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It fits the bill. It fits the fucking bill. It really does. It's got everything that all these other stories have. Just a little bit more intense. And now it's a human. And now it's a human. Now it's a guy who could, like, talk and stuff and, like, walk around. So, this was brought to the attention of the coroner, okay? They showed the coroner pictures of cattle mutilation. And the, they explained, you know, the, the phenomenon, what's going on, the weird shit, blah, who, blah, blah. Who's they? Um, just people in the village. They didn't really specify. Oh, so it was like the village was doing their own sleuthing. They were just like, sort this of. is sort of similar to what happened to that guy. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it right. was presented to the coroner. And the coroner took the pictures and did some research. And he figured out that they're pretty much the same fucking thing. It's like this is exactly what happened to that man. They're extremely similar. Cuts and the size of those cuts and the damage inflicted are all exact replicas of what had happened in the documents that he was given about cattle mutilation. So, this 53-year-old epileptic alcoholic was fucking mutilated... Similar to that of the cattle mutilations that happen following extraterrestrial visits. All We've right? cracked it. Another good day at the office. <laughs> now, I'm going to leave you with one last thought. And this is the fucked up part, okay? This is still officially unsolved and no one is talking about it. That That's what's going on here, okay? No one knows anything. Um, Jake, I'm going to go ahead and give you my phone. Uh-oh. Come here. Uh, Come take my phone. Oh, it looks like Texas Chainsaw from over here. This is the real coroner report photos of this man. And you can scroll and you can see some fucked up shit. Oh, that, the biggest one is just his, his crotch. Uh, um, he's, he's dead. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Crazy. Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. Oh, there's a video here. Uh, I don't want to. I'm not going to click on that. Dude, this one of his face is fucking gnarly as hell. Yep. I, I saved that one because I was like, that one's going on Instagram. That That's what Good the people are going to see. I thought we were like testing the, the limits of Instagram when we did the uh, the Vegas shooting and the, the end result of that. But this. Yeah, this was worse. This is. Uh, this is that on nitrous. Yeah, this, this is fucking up. crazy, dude. <laughs> he looks like a prop. He does. Oh my god. He does, and it it is something that. Oh, dude, you can tell from the holes that it's just like it's he's just hollow. It's just skin. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, and the fact that the, the reason that this was brought to my attention, I was because this is funny. This week. We were talking about it. And okay, I, I'm just, I keep clicking and now I'm seeing a lot of other people without eyes. I'm not going to... Yeah, there's your good. phone back. Um, so I was actually, last week when we were talking about doing an episode, I had something in mind. I wanted to do something conspiracy-esque because that's typically more of what I fall into in my free time. That's what I was thinking it was going to be when I was like, oh, I think I might know, but don't tell me. I'm very uh, pleasantly surprised. And also... Uh, Remember uh, last episode when I was like, you might uh, puke in disgust. You might do that. No, you might. If you look at this, if you look at these photos. The reason this (laughs) happened was the other day I was watching a YouTube video and a coast to coast clip came up of Art Bell talking to John Lear. Okay. And it was only about 10 minutes long. And I watched it because I was like, I'd never heard of this guy. So I was like, okay, this is kind of. Let's give him a shot. So I'm listening, and immediately I'm hooked. This guy just jumps right in. Navi, oh. Navi, don't even worry, all right? He likes John Lear, too. He's jumping right in. But John Lear really caught my attention with the things that he was talking about. And he kind of glossed over the human mutilation thing. And it it got me interested. I was like, okay. And then, it was kind of understandable. At the end, he goes back to it, and he talks about it. He didn't specifically name any instances. He just said that it's something that... 
the government is aware of or the powers that be are aware of. And there's really nothing we can do as far as stopping it or understanding it. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's Excellent. It's another good day at the office. Essentially negative as hell. <laughs> um, but it, it really sparked my interest. So I was looking, and I found this story, okay? And it, it was almost like as if it was meant for me to be talking about this. Because I found this article, and it was written in... A different language. I don't. What do they speak in Brazil? I don't know. Um, Brazilian? Is it Brazil? Is I don't know. I honestly have no idea. Know. Maybe it's Portuguese. I, I just I, didn't want to sound rude and you know, be like, oh, they speak this. It here. could be Mandarin Chinese for all I know. Whatever it was. It was an article that was written in another language. And it was a local news article talking about this. And I picked up a couple things. Obviously, I saw the picture and I was like, what the fuck? Um, and it linked me to it through what I had searched of human mutilation stories. Yeah. So I was like, okay, it's connected. Like, what's going on? So I pick out a couple of the words, and it says Billings Reservoir. So I looked that up, and immediately one of the top results is a Reddit post from a subreddit that I am actually in. And it linked me to it, and the post was made three days prior. And it was, a, it was a guy who had translated the article. What a bit of serendipity. It That's was, fucking crazy. It was crazy. He had <laughs> Dude, the algorithm is, is, is doing something to you right now. It was. It I don't was know if it's on it. purpose or not, but that wow. It was translated three days ago by this guy. And from there, it, it didn't have a lot, so I just started to look it up on my own. And I actually found a lot of information and a lot of stories. Yeah. And they all corroborated the same thing. I mean, they all have the information that I gave to you guys today is the same shit with maybe slight variations, but they're all essentially the same thing. So this shit's happening all over the world, not just Brazil. No, I'm talking about just for this story specifically. Oh. So this is the reason I picked it, because there's not conflicting reports. There's not somebody that says, oh, his ass was still there. It's very uniform in what happened. It's like, no, his ass is gone. So this led me to be really interested because it's rare that you come across a story like this and everything is connected to one. And in this instance, it really was. Yeah, that uh, that was fucking crazy. Um, so I'm going to ask you. What? What do you think it was? <laughs> uh, uh, it could be the cybernetic Jack the Ripper. It could be... Uh... Uh, could have been Navi here. I'm betting his face. Um, I think it was probably aliens. Honestly, I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, I think. You're I mean, like, right. based on, I know it was got weird. Like I said earlier, like the episode kind of primes you to believe that, but it, yeah, yeah. I can't see any other reason or explanation. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like the fucking buzzards didn't even want this thing. What the hell happened? No, and you got to keep in mind. He didn't. It's weird that he didn't smell because I don't know about you guys. It's nice to have a nice smelling corpse. When you look at this man's picture, you're going to think it smells just based on what it looks like. Oh, it looks like it smells bad. Like, it looks horrendously awful. Like so you would gag at the thought of this smell. It looks like you would want to go a block over. And the fact that it doesn't smell is is weird enough, let alone. All the extra shit that's like, packed. Strangely into. enough, he smelled like lavender. He was quite pleasant. Was like lavender and vanilla bean. But this guy, who for the purposes of this story, I'm going to name Leon. Um, Leon? Why not Sheila? No, because no, Jake. Grant, I said earlier, I, is, I have no say in this episode. This is. Brazil. I want some sort of power. All right, all right. He's, that's fine. Well, we'll I, Sheila. I agree. I agree. Is dead. I threw all this on you. We'll give you the name. I agree. Thank you. That's fair. Thank you. Um, so I Sheila, do like Leon, though. <laughs> it's, it's a good name. It's a Sheila good name. Sheila Leon Benedict. Sheila Leon the 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 depraved. I don't. I don't. There know. you go. Yeah, it's like a there fucking D and D character. Yeah. Some shit. She. <laughs> um. If I ever play D and D, that's gonna be mine. Sheila Leon the depraved. Yes. Oh um, God. But there, there's a lot of things about this story that are unsettling. And I think the largest thing is something that John Lear said, and I'm, I'm going to connect this back to him to round it out. Yeah, Mr. Plain Man. That it really leads us to believe that the idea of extraterrestrials, at least if you follow some of the things that he says, which 
interestingly enough, it could all be part of a grand mass conspiracy. Or he could be one of the very odd people, similar to Phil Schneider, that have similar stories that maybe they're telling a little bit of the truth. I don't know. Is uh, Mr. Lear still with us? Um, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, look I, it up. I don't know. What's his name? John Lear. John Lear. Um, I'm not sure, exactly. But... It was Junior, right? Uh, no, just John Lear. John Lear. Um, but the point that I'm making is that he is now the second person that we've talked about that shares a similar outlook uh, uh, as far as what Phil Schneider had to say. Oh, this guy's alive, dude. He's still alive. He's 79 awesome. years old. Good for him. Yeah. Um, But it's intriguing to me because the point that I think he's trying to make is that if what he's saying is true, if we are to believe that there are at least 18 races of aliens that sort of view us as a science project to be manipulated and toyed with. At some point, I want to get into those other races, because I, I thought there were like five. Oh, there's a shit or ton. Or something. There's a shit ton. Um, but it the, the part that's unsettling to me is somebody that's always been interested in aliens, this opens the door to the question of, are they interested in benefiting us, or are we nothing but essentially a plaything. They're just them. suckling from our life force and having fun along the way. Mutilating cattle is one thing. It's fucked up. It's not cool. No one likes it. You can't mutilate our middle-aged alcoholic uh, dudes. Exactly. Don't do that. When you start doing it to humans, now the conversation shifts. It's a whole new product here. Okay? Yeah. yeah. I don't know where that leaves us, but I do know this is a very strange tale and it's something that we probably will never get an answer to. And I think it was, like I said at the beginning, I believe that it was a safe bet to say that not many of you or none of you have ever heard of this I've story. I've never heard of this story, and I loved it. But, I, like I said, I know it's a little, it's, it sucks. It's a little bit of a shorter episode, but that really is the story. It's over. No, that, that was enough to fill days of satisfaction for me. That, and, was, that was good. Yeah, that, that's sort of why I was okay with it. I, I was thinking of actually scrapping it and doing something else to make it longer. But when I actually looked at my notes, I was like, you know what? I think even if this was 30 minutes, this would be a hefty enough episode to be okay with. No, this is top shelf shit. It's not something I'm ashamed to put out and be like, we could have done more. It's like, no, we, no, no, this we is covered good. the bases. There's just, it's a short story, but it's fucked up. Yeah. You know? Which are the best stories. <laughs> but I will leave you guys with some cool info. Oh, he's raising my chair. Oh, my God. Davi, stop. No, he's stop. lowering it. He's bringing me down. Nice. There okay, you saw me reach for the bottle. But um, <laughs> Navi's controlling your chair now. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> good, um, good job, Navi. But what I was going to say is that the reason I'm okay with this being a little bit of a shorter episode, we don't, we have, we have the plans, we have motions going, right? Yeah. We know what we're going to be doing. Maybe not specifically next week, but in the next couple weeks, we're going to have. Probably some of the heavier series of episodes we've ever done. It's pretty sweet. As far as scale of interest and as far as longevity of the the idea. Um, obviously, Skinwalker yes. Ranch will always hold, at least for the very foreseeable future, will hold the title of the longest series we've ever done. Was that longer was than... five than episodes cr- we did. What about Crowley? Wasn't, wasn't that? Oh, that one might... No, I think that was four. Ah, that know. might have given it a run, though. That We've might've... done long things in the past, is what we're trying to say. Yeah, and I don't foresee these things being four-parters, um, but I do foresee them being very meaty, non-stop conversation starters. Yeah. Um, so definitely be ready for that. we got some really cool shit coming your way, and I think you're going to love it. I also think that. I will say, I'll give you a little teaser. Um, I, we don't have the the plan of when it's happening, but it's coming within the next month. I'd say it's fair to say. Um, we're going to be covering the biggest and most widely known conspiracy theory known to man. All, All right. right. Yeah. No, it sounds good to me. And if you know what we're talking about, you'll know. And if you don't, all it takes is a little bit of thought, and you'll be like, I know exactly where they're going. Yeah. 
Um, but with that, that is essentially our episode for the week. Yes, this lovely Friday afternoon. Yes. Hell yeah. I don't think I said this at the beginning, but uh, we are starting to call this Grand Up Jake. Yeah. Yeah. And it is us. Navi was here. You heard him a little bit. He was uh, he was controlling chairs. He was yelling. Uh, Mitch is not here yet. He's probably coming later. He might be on the Patreon because we're going to be recording that here in a little bit. Yeah. And we're probably going to be posting those at the same time. The This one and that, that is. But uh, in the meantime, you can follow us on all the shit. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Oh, yeah. And TikTok, Wasack underscore pod. That's awesome. And we got the email, startacult at gmail.com. We're on YouTube. You like and subscribe there. It's awesome. And uh, what else we got? Uh, fucking just the Patreon. Down below, there's always a link down there. It's oh, always yeah. down there. It's always down there. We love you guys, and we'll see you in September of 22. Oh, my God. I'm going to be 26. Oh. Bye. Bananas. <laughs>